You're listening to musician, author, and educator, Bobby Borg, breaking down music, business, and marketing basics so they stick. Hey, everybody. My name is Bobby Borg, and welcome to USC's DIY Podcast Studio. And the topic of my discussion today is music lessons money. And for those of you guys that don't know me, I'm a former major label independent and DIY recording and touring artist, an author of several music business and marketing books, and an adjunct professor and consultant too. So most musicians know how difficult it is to make music and money, and money and music, right? Very difficult. But when I graduated from Berkeley, what I actually did is made money and paid bills and covered expenses by teaching music lessons. However, not everybody knows how to set up a music teaching lesson business. They usually do not know how to create curriculum, target their market, price, or promote. So what I'd like to do is offer 10 tips that can help you to be more successful. So let's get started. When we, when we think about price, a lot of people just think about an arbitrary figure. Eh, 60 bucks, eh, 50 bucks, whatever. But I want you guys to think about this a little bit more. First, I want you guys to go out and again, look at your competitors and ask yourself what they charge. But this is what I do not want you to do. I don't want you to basically compete on price. I don't want you to say, well, they charge 50, so I'll charge 45, you know, um, and try to lowball, you know, because it's just going to, no one ever wins in that battle. So what I want you to do is I want you to look at what they charge, and then I don't want you to sell the price. I want you to sell the difference. For example, if I charge 75 and someone else charges 50, right, you don't drop to 50. What I do is I sell the 25. I show all the benefits that you get for that extra 25. This is a, a skill uh, by Zig Ziglar, uh, a great salesperson. He said, never sell the price, sell the difference. So use this technique because it, it, it's masterful and it will get you to, to really hone in on what the benefits are and why people should care about your products and services, okay? Now, on this note, um, uh, pricing in general, don't just charge flat like hourly rates or flat half an hour rates. Why not 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour, an hour and a half, right? How about letting two people take a class at once and then splitting the fee? right? There's lots of ways you can look at this. How about in the beginning you do what's called a donation pricing strategy? In other words, you say, come on over, play, and then you pay me what you think the lesson was worth, right? And you obviously, of course, just do that as an introduction because you couldn't do that forever, right? Another thing you might do is a guaranteed pricing strategy. What I used to tell people is I go, look, come over and after the first half an hour, if you're not happy, you don't pay anything. It worked like a charm. So think about your pricing strategies. Very, very important stuff. You know, when you think about place, you know, you think, I don't know, I'll teach out of my, uh, my cellar. Well, cool. That's what I did. And it worked out great for me. I, you know, we were renting a house and, um, you know, I practiced uh, in the cellar and, um, you know, have all my drum kits set up. So I would teach there. Then at night, my band would rehearse there. So it worked out really, really great. But this doesn't always work out for everybody because there's noise issues, right? So you have to think about some of the other uh, options that are available to you. You could do house calls and go to the client's house, right? You could do that. You could also teach um, online, which is definitely an option. Another thing you could do is teach in music stores. Now, just keep in mind when you do that, they're going to want to split usually 50-50. So if they charge $50, they're going to pay you $25. But in any case, remember that placement or distribution is all about convenience. So you want to provide convenience to your end user. And the more places that you make your products and services available, the more business that you are going to do. Okay? You know, when people think about promotion, they think about one thing, the internet, 
And hey, cool, right? So you make your YouTube videos and then you tell people like, hey, you know, I also teach as well. Or you make your little Instagram videos and you say, hey, I teach. And then maybe you talk about it on Twitter and, and so on and so forth. All really, really good stuff. But keep in mind, you cannot be one dimensional about your promotion. There is so many other types of promotion that you can do. So for example, print advertising. It worked out really well for me and still today, Every city has its music magazine. You know, LA has Music Connection. You know, Boston had something called The Beat. New York has The Village Voice. And you know, the great thing about these, uh, these uh, sources is that they are extremely targeted. The only people that read them are people that are interested in music, right? So what I did is I placed an ad out for several weeks and um, it worked extremely well for me. So, you know, don't just think one dimensionally. Now, another thing when we're talking about promotion is think about your target customer and bring the promotion to them. In other words, consider their activities, interests, opinions, their lifestyles, what do they do, where do they go, and bring the promotion to them. For example, if I'm teaching a younger demographic audience, maybe I'm teaching students, you know, kids that go to school, then I should go over and introduce myself to the local music teachers. Tell them that I'm available and I'm in town and I teach lessons and I'm willing to help out any way I can. Don't assume they know who you are, right? Another thing I saw somebody do is they said, okay, well, I teach young kids. What do young kids do? They do sports. When do they do it? On the weekend. Where do they do it? They, for, you know, they're, they're part of these little peewee leagues and stuff like that. They sponsored a peewee league. So imagine like, you know, you have the kids running around playing soccer with Bobby Borg drum instructions, you know, or something of that nature. Now the parents are seeing that and then the parents are going like, wow, you know, who's this Bobby Borg guy? We're going to like sign up our kids for lessons. You know, you really have to think smart like this and you have to try to connect the dots. And we can, I mean, some of these things aren't practical for you, but you know, you got to think in this way, right? You got to try to connect the dots, something that is extremely important. You know, there's a great quote, and uh, it's, it's something like this. It's uh, half the money I spend on marketing is wasted, only I don't know which half, right? So you've got to measure. If you're not measuring, you are not marketing. You have to understand what is working and what is not working because you don't want to throw good money after bad. So for example, with that print ad I was telling you about, right? What I did is I asked one important question. How did you hear about me? How did you hear about me? So when people would call in, I would say, how did you hear about me? And then I would write it on what I called a promotional report card. So I wrote down all the strategies I was doing, um, internet uh, lists, because I was renting internet lists from local music stores, um, print ad, you know, posters, etc. And then I would mark off every time I got a score. And the trade print uh, advertising uh, just blew everything else away. So I threw out the other stuff and put all my money into that. So you definitely don't have time and money to waste. So measure your marketing. It gives us the ability to manage what we're doing. Because if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. So make sure to measure. And you know, finally, we need to think about some of the business aspects that are related to uh, teaching, doing a teaching practice, of course, right? Very, very in, uh, important stuff to think about. For example, when you take in that cash that sometimes people will pay you, well, you have to pay taxes on that. So you have to figure out a way of how to track that. Then also think about the expenses you're going to have, right? If you're going house to house, the gas or the miles on your car, right? You need to think about maybe when you buy sticks or manuscripts and stuff like that. Some of that stuff you'll be able to write off um, against your taxes. So you need to look into that, right? Another thing you might want to think about too is in some cities you have to pay a, a, a business tax, a city business tax. So you have to know about that as well because eventually they'll catch up with you, right? So you have to know about that. Then you might also consider what sort of business entity you want to be. You're just going to be a sole proprietor. You're going to be a, uh, you know, a C corp, an S corp, or you're going to be a limited liability company. And all of these things might help to limit your liabilities and also pro provide some tax advantages. 
but it might be right for you, it might be wrong for you. Talk to a certified public accountant or talk to a, a business consultant because they can help you with the specifics of this. Then you also have to ask, are you gonna be accepting checks in like some other name, like some, some other fictitious name, or is it gonna be they're gonna write checks to Bobby Board? You need to know this because when you walk into a bank, if I have something like, you know, Thunder Drumming, incorporated or whatever, you know, I mean, or just thunder drumming, it's like, who's thunder drumming, right? So I need to have like a DBA so that they connect the dots that thunder drumming is Bobby Borg and they actually cash the check. So, you know, very, another very, very important tip. So make sure to talk to a professional about this and take it very, very seriously. So everybody, what I'm trying to do is break down music, business, and marketing basics so that they stick. Today we talked about music, lessons, money. So I hope these tips will help you out, and I certainly hope that you check out the next clip. All right, you guys, so as I always say, peace. Hey everybody, if you like the videos that you just watched, please be sure to check out my books, Business Basics for Musicians and Music Marketing for the DIY Musician, available at Amazon.com, BobbyBoard.com, or any fine bookseller. Thanks again for watching and peace.